The current Mercedes E-Class has been around for about a year now, and in that time, it has reigned supreme at the top of its class. However, its crown is under threat from this, the new BMW 5 Series. I'm going to find out which of these two cars is best. To help you decide which of these two cars is best for you, I'm going to critique their designs. This E-Class is effortlessly beautiful. Inspect their cabins. You can think of it being more like Hugo Boss than Karl Lagerfeld. Test how practical they are. The possibilities are quite literally endless. And see how they feel to drive. Like you're a baby just being swayed in the crib. But first, let's talk about numbers. The Mercedes E-Class starts from £35,160, while the BMW 5 Series starts from £36,165. But what matters most is the actual price you pay at a dealer. You can go to carwow.co.uk where you can save an average of £3,334 on the 5 Series or £5,877 off the E-Class. So then, in terms of pricing, it's first blood to the Mercedes. But what? about the styling. I'm really loving Mercedes-Benz design at the moment. This E-Class is effortlessly beautiful. In fact, it even looks good in boring burgundy. I think I must be getting a bit old. So, the E-Class has plenty of wow factor, especially on these upgraded 20-inch alloy wheels and in sporty AMG line body kit. This particular BMW 5 Series is also in its racier-looking trim, the M Sport. But is that enough to make it stand out? I think BMW's designers could have done a little bit more with this car's exterior styling. I mean, it's, it's nice enough, but it just doesn't seem as expensive as the Mercedes E-Class. Now, that's my personal opinion. What do you guys think? Click up there to vote which you think is the best looking car, the Mercedes E-Class or the new BMW 5 Series. So, with that in mind, let's talk interiors, darling, and start with the Mercedes. There's just something a bit grand about the interior of the E-Class. It's very spacious, you've got this swooping effect of the dash, and if you get in this gloss piano black trim, it kind of makes you feel like you're at the helm of a big ship, though it could be a spaceship because you've got so much tech on board. I mean, look, I can, I can alter the colours to express my mood, a bit like some kind of alien communication. The only thing is, is that there's the odd bit of trim which lets it down. I mean, look at this. It's a bit cheap, really. That's not the only issue. While this car does have the upgraded command sat-nav and digital driver's display, which incidentally combined costs an extra £2,000, the system as a whole is a little bit confusing to use, even though it's nice and bright and shiny. It's just not as slick as BMW's iDrive, which quite frankly is the best system on the market. It's easy to navigate and you can operate it using the touchscreen or by using a physical control wheel, and even by waving your hand about like you're the conductor of an orchestra, thanks to gesture control. Though to be fair, this last method is a little bit of a gimmick. Never mind though, because on the 5 Series, you get BMW's top-of-the-range widescreen satellite navigation and even digital driver's dials as standard on all models. But what is the rest of the cabin like? The interior design doesn't quite have the bling of the Benz, but you know, it's still very classy and a bit understated. You can think of it being more like Hugo Boss than Karl Lagerfeld, and I cannot fault the quality. No matter where you look in here, you won't find a cheap bit of plastic. So the front seats of the BMW are a lovely place to sit, and the news is just as good in the rear. This thing is absolutely massive here in the back seats. There's so much room back here, and there's plenty of headroom. I mean, look at that, see? People, whatever six foot, will be fine back here. The only problem is that a raised centre seat and a large hump in the floor means that the person in the middle won't be anywhere near as comfy as those in the outer seats. Still, fitting a baby seat is a doddle due to the wide opening doors and flip up Isofix anchor covers. But then, it's the same story with the Mercedes. It's just as easy to fit a baby seat in one of those. But what is the Merc like for adults in the back? There's plenty of space here in the back of the E-Class and it's really comfy as well. It's little wonder that uber black drivers often choose these cars because their clients really enjoy an E-Class. Now there's one thing to note though, headroom, it's good, but it's not amazing. And that means that really, really tall people might struggle for headspace. Ironically, while the E-Class may not be quite as good as the BMW for the outer passengers when traveling three up, it's lower center seat and smaller hump in the floor makes it better for the piggy in the middle. And this theme continues within car storage. The Mercedes is impressive, but the BMW is slightly better for interior cubby spaces. But the reverse is true when it comes to boot space. This car's boot is nice and big. One slight gripe is that the shape of the opening can make it a little bit awkward to get certain things in, but on the whole, yeah. Loads of room to back it full, and there's some underfloor storage as well. 
You can carry loads of stuff in the Mercedes. It's easily practical for most people. Plus, with the seats folded, you can even load a bike without taking its wheel off. So, how does the BMW measure up? The 5 Series boot doesn't have any underfloor storage, which is a little bit of a shame, and its outright capacity is 10 litres less than the Mercedes boot. I mean, think what you could do with 10 litres. The possibilities are quite literally endless. Up to the point of 10 litres, of course. Thing is, while the BMW's boot is big, the shape is not as square as the Mercedes, and that makes it harder to pack full of stuff. For instance, even with the seats folded, you will still need to remove a bike's wheel to fit it in the boot. In short, the Mercedes has the better boot. But is it the better car to drive? This E-Class is absolutely blooming lovely to drive. I mean, it's set up with comfort rather than sportiness in mind, but that's no problem. That's what these cars are supposed to do, and this Mercedes does luxurious and comfort very well. Now, I should point out this particular car is riding on the 1500 pound optional air suspension, and it just feels like you're floating down the road. It does this lovely little kind of rocking side to side over bumps, like you're a baby just being swayed in the crib. But you don't have to worry about falling asleep behind the wheel because the car's attention assist will spot if you're nodding off and warn you. There is a trade-off for that comfort though, and that's the fact that this car does roll quite a bit in the corners. That won't matter to most people, but if you like a sporty drive, it could put you off somewhat. Thing is though, I can't fault this car's engine. It's a two-litre diesel. It gives 74 miles per gallon economy, according to Mercedes. According to the trick computer, it gives 49 miles per gallon, which is very good, and it's got lots of performance. If you put your foot down, Oh, it just pulls and pulls. It's really strong. It's surprising how quick it is, actually. And the nine-speed gearbox, which is standard, that's really nice at slushing gears together. It's not the quickest to respond, but it's fast enough. So then, the Mercedes is a majestically comfy, quiet, and effortless cruiser. But what is a BMW like? Now, jumping from the Mercedes into this, there is a noticeable difference. This BMW definitely feels sportier. It actually seems like a smaller car because of the way you sit in it. You don't feel like you're at the helm of a big boat. And the benefit is that it is more fun to drive. The car just doesn't roll as much in the corners at all. The steering feels sharper. It doesn't have much feel really, but that's only a concern of motoring journalists. Most people won't care. The fact that you can hold this car through some bends better than the Mercedes will matter to some people but there's no way in this class that people are going to take handling over comfort. And normally that's where the BMW would fall down slightly, but with this new 5 Series, it's like you can have your cake and eat it. Handles well, and it's also really comfortable. Now, this car is on the optional adaptive dampers. They're about a thousand pounds. It's not air suspension like in the Mercedes, so you don't get that kind of relaxing rocking effect, but it still irons out bumps in the road just as well. I think this car is as comfy as the Merc and it has the added benefit of being more fun at the same time. As with the Mercedes, you get an automatic gearbox as standard, though this one has eight speeds and I think it is a bit more responsive than that in the E-Class. In terms of the engine, I've got two litre diesel once again. It can do, according to BMW, 68 miles per gallon, though this computer says I'm doing, I'm doing 43, which isn't quite so impressive. The engine itself seems rougher than the one in the E-Class. And I don't think it's got quite as much performance, but let's see. What I need is the Mercedes back, so... Here we go. Right, what I'm going to do is imagine that I'm just cruising along, 40 miles an hour, we're both in comfort mode, but all of a sudden, you need to put your foot down. What happens? So, three, two, one, go! Come on, respond. This gearbox was faster, but... Oh, look! He's got the lead on me just about, and he's pulling away. I think that's the end of that. Well, I think that was pretty obvious. This gearbox did respond quicker than that one, you could tell, but that engine has more performance. It was slowly edging away, and that would matter. That would matter a lot out in the real world. I'd be feeling a little bit disappointed about my BMW right now. Fortunately, that sinking feeling will soon pass because the 5 Series is a very, very good car. But is it better overall than an E-Class? Well, I tell you what, this, it's a really tough one to call. These cars are so closely matched that really, there is no wrong choice. But if push comes to shove, I'd have to say that while the Mercedes is super lovely, I think the BMW is a slightly better all-rounder. 
And that's why it wins this test. Please like, share and comment on this video and click on our logo to subscribe. Also, click on the video windows to watch the detailed reviews of each of the cars in this test.